Hi everyone. So my name is Macarena Miranda, or everyone calls me Mac. So I'll go into what my company does. So the first thing is I'll just give you a slight overview of who Gracenote is and how we kind of function in this market. So we are a data and technology company. We were originally called HWW. We were owned or a subsidiary rather of Channel 9 back when it was co-owned by Nine and Microsoft. Then we became just Nine with uh, MI9 and then we were sold over to Gracenote. Gracenote, for those who may be slightly familiar, is actually a music company originally. It's the one that when you stuck your CD inside your like laptop and it read the music on there and it spat out who the title was, the artist, the duration, all of that kind of gizmo, that was Gracenote. When Gracenote bought, I think about 10 or 11 metadata companies in the space of two years, um, one of which was us, they decided to rebrand entirely as Gracenote as it was the most well-known metadata company of the lot. HWW didn't quite have the same ring to it. So we were then bought a couple of years ago by Nielsen again. So we just kept getting swallowed by everybody. Um, Nielsen, for those who aren't as familiar, does more of the media consumption around ratings and audience measurement and things like that. When it comes to what I'm going to talk about, however, I'm not really going to go into the Nielsen side of things too much, mainly because that's not what I deal with personally, but it's also not part of the database that we actually work with directly. So when I talk about Gracenote, it's going to be more about a local focus as well as a global focus. Whenever I talk about local, it's actually going to be about a specific database that I refer to, which is called Data Genius. Um, it's one that we created here at HWW. We have our own engineers, our own team that works it. When I talk global, it's actually about eight different data systems, but we kind of capture it all under one thing, which is TMS. So the TMS or Gracenote ID. So this is some of the partners and areas in which we work. I'm only going to focus really on video, maybe dabble a slight bit into sports as there's a bit too much for me to go into if I go through it all. Um, even though the music side is actually usually the most fun, but I'm gonna stick with video. This is some of our clients, some of our bigger guys that we work with, um, just so you kind of get an idea of the, the breadth of kind of areas that we delve into. So talking about some of those customers, Two that kind of are a little bit more well known in this market so that I can give you some more examples when I talk about the database and how we use it and how we actually kind of bring it about. Um, I'll talk about Google and I'll talk about Samsung. Google because it's the one that actually uses us more as a, a database powerhouse. Samsung because it actually uses us more as like a PVR, a data kind of provider to place on platform smart features. So things like the smart TVs, um, things like around the same thing as LG is about to start doing in this market, the same as your Foxtel boxes kind of do, the same as what your Fetch pucks do, the same as what your Telstra TV2s do, all of that kind of stuff. So. I'll go into it now. So the on entertainment is actually what we kind of sell our whole database as, um, just because if we try to name each and every system, it gets a bit complicated. So we just wrap it all up as the on entertainment database. What we do in that database is that we go through and we have the data that we manage in a TV schedule land. So that's things that are kind of tied to time and date. So if something is gonna air at this point, I can go click on it on that day. The next one is that we then do content. So that's all content around TV programs for movies. We also then move into VOD and OTT, and that is video on demand and over the top. So that's things like your Netflixes, your ABC iViews, your SBSs on demand, your stands, all of that. We also then do our imagery. So our rich media is all about making sure that when we have our database spitting out all of this nice content, there's something visual for people to link onto as well. And then our biggest seller when it comes to actually how we do things in this market with Gracenote and our database is all about search and discovery. I'm gonna go into some examples of how we actually do that for some of our clients here using our database information and you'll kind of see how it all ties together. And then lastly, it's about making sure that we can then deliver our database in a myriad of ways. So when it comes to our database and how we work in it on either a local 
or that global level. You also want to make sure that what that database is delivering is something that can crosswalk into everybody else's formats. One of the nicest things that we're able to do for clients with our database and what a database essentially needs to be able to do is not just have all that nice contained information, but be able to actually smooth quite nicely into somebody's platform, into their UI, into the usability, into what those customers and the experience they want to have with it. So when I talk about that on TV in our database and all the things that we do in our Gracenote database, this is all the product suites. So we do things on, on TV schedules, and that's the one where I click my time and I can go and see an EPG and record something, series link something, all that kind of gizmo. Then we've got our TV and movie data, so if someone purely wants to use it like Google, if I'm just typing something up and I want to see what's happening on the side corner, it'll just drop in information with an image, a title, a cast, maybe a little brief description, that kind of thing, with OVD, VOD, celebrity, social, and heaps of other bits. So that Gracenote ID. So that's the TMS ID I was talking at the top. And this is the one that actually facilitates all of our database. So it allows us to do all of this nice trickery with each of what we need to do with the database itself. So here is a much nicer way to explain it. <laughs> um, I don't want to show you something from the actual database because it just is all like gray and very boring. But here we've got Orphan Black. In the middle, you can see our nice little picture. Up the very top, you've got the title. It's called Orphan Black. In our database, it'll get given a show ID or an SH ID. Anything that sports gets given an SP ID. Movies get an MV ID, etc., etc. So that way, you've got a unique ID that is attached to that one piece of programming. Now, that one piece of programming may appear on Foxtel. It may appear on Telstra's channel. It might come from Viceland over here. It might be also airing on Netflix. It might be also airing on Stan. So if you're a platform or a customer or whatever, and you just want to type in Orphan Black and just find out where the heck it's actually showing, what a database like this does is that it links up everywhere that something is showing something and just provides one universal ID for every single one of those. So rather than having to go into Stan and find out exactly what's going on there, go into Foxtel and find out what's going on in there, our database spits out one ID, one format, one thing that can cross between every single one of those formats. So how that gets a little bit fancier for us is that we actually have 276 free-to-air channels and 156 STV channels or paid channels. That 276 is actually technically about 460 because it doesn't include child channels or affiliates like Impages, Wins, Southern Crosses. It's more talking about Nine, ABC, SBS, etc. So what becomes quite nice for how we work is that rather than having to have a database deal with 276 different formats or 158 different styles of databases, we take it all inside our local database as well as that global database and standardize it. We make it give all the data, like I said before, that one ID. So that way we're actually, actually able to link everything up quite nicely. On an EPG just like this, it just means that we can have an image attached to something so it pops up all nice and lush looking when you're trying to find out what to watch. It means that we can have things like HD flags, captions, all of that kind of stuff integrated into our, from our database feeding into the products because all they have to do is align themselves to one database rather than to the myriad of different ones. So what can we then add to it from our database? Our database also deals with editorially produced descriptions. So our database does a scan of different things when it comes to how we manage our information. We manage it through a series of different teams globally. So our one database, I feel like I'm saying that a lot, um, actually has a whole bunch of different languages. So we have the ENAU database here and an ENAU team that's editorially managing that. We have an ENUK or British 
um, team that's based over in Amsterdam that does all of the British stuff. We've got a team in the US that does all the US stuff. And that's mainly around things like market-specific imagery, market-specific titles, our differences in language. We don't want mom in there, we want mums, all of that kind of stuff. So our database is able to <coughs> link all of those different language types and the variations we have to a root ID. So our database kind of collapses up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, collapses up and is able to kind of put it all together. So here is some of that imagery that I was talking about just before. And that's the way that we can kind of connect everything up and look at, make it look all nice. So over here is the online video data. So like I was saying before, when you've got everything collapsing from those different databases into one, it means that we're able to support a whole bunch of different platforms. So in here, when you've got something that's giving you the option to go watch it in here or watch it there or watch it here, that's our deep links. So that's part of our database as well, where you've got those URL deep links that makes you plug straight from one database, takes you directly to somebody else's. So there's no fiddling around. This is some of the ones that we support, for example, just in case you wanted to know which ones that we work with. And then we've got those VODs. So the VODs is where we have global search. So I'm gonna go skip sports because I'm running out of time. But this is the example of the ones that I was talking about before. So when you've got the VODs and you've got everything interconnected in one database, all collapsing into that one root ID, so that there's one ID to rule them all, so to say, um, kind of like that golden sheet idea, is that it means that no matter how you're using that particular, set, that particular program, it's going to appear in each of those places as one thing. So here, clever man, if I wanna see it's on SBS, for instance, and I go, great, I can watch it tonight, it's on at 8.30, this is all its information, there's a nice little snazzy picture because it's part of our database and it's sucking that up and spitting it out to show it to everybody. But what if I now wanna go and watch it maybe on SBS iView? So I now click into it to go, okay, let me find out a little bit more about this particular program. Now it's sucking in, rather than just that episodic or TV schedule data, it's going deeper into our database and pulling out series information. So now it's going, okay, I've now pulled out that whole series description that's been written editorially by one of our guys and placed into our database. It's also got some cast attached to it, so it's going to pop up our nice cast imagery that's also part of our nice rich reel. So next to it there, you've got everybody that's also on the show. Which means if I then click into one of those guys, our celebrity database, which is connected to that root ID, pops in your main guy and goes, hey, he was born here, he was you know, from this place, here's a little bit of a bio about him, here's some awards he's won, here's some other films he's also featured in. We do this quite nicely when it comes to sport in particular, because it means that that database, which is actually called Mercs, slightly different, um, it means that if my sports player is on ESPN tonight, I can click into him and actually see what maybe games he's playing in that weekend or anything like that. So that one database, because of that one root ID, is able to go and pull all that necessary information into a nice one neat package. So then I now know, great, I want to go watch that show, I want to see that episode, but where can I go watch it? Maybe I'm not free tonight at 8.30, so let me see what other places I could potentially go see that. And that's where that VOD and OVD, that online video data, um, catalog mapping comes into place. Because what we do is we take Netflix, we take Foxtel, we take Stan, we take Big Pond Movies, and we assign that ID for Clever Man to each of their catalogs where that title appears. So that a person here can go, oh, it's on Netflix, I have a subscription to that, great, I'll go watch it later tonight since I'm gonna miss this particular airing. And then this is just a little bit more a deeper dive of that um, database information itself. I don't wanna show you the database because like I said, it's just a bit gray. So here's some of the examples of what our database collects. So we have our season and episode information. We've got all of that original air date information. Original air date is really big in a database when it comes to entertainment because you need to know when something was created or when something is gonna be put out because the last thing you want is that piece of content being connected to something incorrectly. 
So that's kind of one way in which we can kind of measure our quality around data, um, trying to connect it to, okay, did it come from Australia? It aired in 2016, so it's not the clever man that was in the US in 2014 under a different thing. And then you've got all the imagery. So once we have that imagery attached to something, it also becomes quite easy to go and check exactly what it is that you're pulling. We have a whole range of different images that we store into our database. They're called like iconics, banners. Um, we've got iconics with titling, ones without, all of that kind of stuff. And they each have their own IDs and root systems so that the person connects to one and can use it however they want without having to adjust every single time. So they just say, my logic is I will use root here, image X here every time, and it will just fit right in. And then the same thing with our cast. So when we fit it into our database, each one then gets connected to that root again, and everything links back up. So you get things that then look like this. We have our descriptions, everything kind of pops into where it needs to pop. Someone can just go, you know what? My UI doesn't have enough space to have 250 characters. I can only fit 100 and we're like, great. You don't have to change and adapt and cut things every single time to us. We'll just give you the shorter one and just default to that every single time. Our database can adapt to what you need and just spit out whatever you've got and deliver that ongoing. And then that's a little bit more cast on those guys. So this is kind of what then our celebrity data looks like. Again, links all to that root ID. So if I want to go look at Nicole Kidman in Lion on whatever platform I'm on, our database just like pulls that information out and can feed that straight into whatever you're using. And that is a little highlight. <laughs> <laughs>